Today, I want to show you some important things I've learned about everyone's favorite study type in Fusion 360, which has to be a shape optimization. Here I've already created one on the grip or arm sample file, and I've incorporated important shape optimization options, such as preserve regions, a symmetry plane, as well as two loads, the primary load and a secondary compressive load at half the magnitude. But at this point, I want to clone the study a couple times to highlight important details anyone using this should know. With the first, I wanted to explore mesh options. We'll access the mesh details and expand the advanced section to reveal that it's defaulting to a linear mesh type. A linear mesh type is a simpler representation than that of parabolic because as indicated in the tooltip, it ignores mid-side nodes. You don't need to be an FEA expert to understand what this means, just know that more nodes will typically increase result quality, so we'll try it. Next, we'll clone it again, and as the name I'm giving this iteration indicates, we'll increase both loads to 10 times with that of the original. Finally, one last clone. And in this setup, I want to force the ratio between the loads to be skewed from the original by keeping the primary force where it is, but reduce the compressive force to be almost non-existent. With that done, let's cloud solve all four of these at one time. And although I can go work on other designs while that's offloaded, I'm staying here because I want you to note that the parabolic mesh studies are taking much longer to solve. With added nodes and accuracy, comes more complex math. Skipping ahead, the results are back, so let's review. The original study gives us an optimized shape and adheres to the preserved regions and symmetry while maximizing stiffness. Looks fine, but this tip is more about comparing this to other results, so what about the version with the parabolic mesh? We'll see little to no difference. Parabolic will add substantial solve time without significant benefit, which helps explain why a shape optimization defaults to a linear mesh type. Next up, the case where we apply 10 times the load, which surprisingly produces the same results, because the way it's currently being solved, the load magnitudes are only relative to one another. Which leads us to the last case, where we finally see something different due to a 1000 to 1 load ratio versus the 2 to 1 ratio found in the other studies. Further to that, Note the nearly negligible front face. This is preserved because the selected toggle at the bottom, which signifies that any face with constraints or loads will be preserved. Which makes sense in most cases, but it's something you should be aware of. With that said and done, let's go back into the original setup and promote the mesh. Using it, we can 3D print this model as is, jump into the mesh workspace to smooth it, use it to create cam toolpaths, or we can use it as a guide to remove materials from the design. Keeping my budget in mind, I'll choose the latter and use the mesh as a guide to remove areas that have no importance to the load path. To verify that we're still safely able to withstand the stresses caused by these loads, I'll clone the now out-of-date shape optimization study, change it to a static stress study, and solve. In no time at all, I'll be able to verify whether or not the stress level should be of concern. In this case, we lucked out, and the factor of safety is in an acceptable range. But we're not always that lucky, so make sure to assess those new designs with the static stress study. Hope that helps.